In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the last in first out method or LIFO as applied to inventory valuation. This is one of the cost flow assumptions or cost formulas that we use in financial accounting when dealing with inventory. And one thing I must mention before we do anything else is that this is prohibited under IFRS, but allowed under US GAAP. And you must know that because for sure your examiner may want to see if you know this detail. Okay, in the question, we're actually going to cover how the LIFO assumption is used under a periodic inventory system. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. This is the question. It's very similar or practically the same to a previous question, which I was solving with you which was covering the FIFO or first in, first out assumption, which is the direct opposite of LIFO. So same purchases, same sales. If you didn't watch that previous video, it may be a good idea to do that first, but it's not necessarily 100% uh, required. Now, assuming the company uses the LIFO method and maintains a periodic inventory system, what is its gross profit for the month of December and closing inventory balance as at the 31st of December in respect of the inventory line described above? Now, just like, you know, under the FIFO assumption, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, calculate the number of units purchased and sold. So um, this is fairly straightforward and we've already done it. So I just need to put this down in order to uh, have the data for subsequent sections of my computations. How many items were purchased? Well, 70 and 70, so that gives 140. How many units were sold? It was 20 and 60, uh, which obviously gives a value of 80. Now, just like, like I, I explained, sorry, in the previous video on FIFO, um, without any information to contradict this assumption, I'm going to assume that at the beginning of the period, the company had absolutely nothing in its inventory, uh, at least um, with regard to this line of inventory. So we don't have to deal with any opening balance of inventory. What's going to be therefore the ending balance or ending inventory? If we purchased 140 items, but we sold 80, that's going to give an ending balance of 60 units. And it's now a question of, you know, how are we going to value these? What value are we going to place on it? And given that we're operating under the LIFO assumption, I'm going to assume that those ending inventory units must have come from the earliest uh, deliveries. That was uh, the purchases made at 53 per unit because the essence of LIFO is that we assume that the most recent deliveries are the first one, first ones to leave the company, whereas the oldest deliveries or items purchased as part of the oldest de deliveries are still there in the warehouse, so to speak. Let's see what this gives. 60 times 53. 3,180. Okay. How about the next item? I'm going to calculate something that I did before as well. And that's going to be the total, um, the value of the total goods available. However, let me just take a moment and say that 3,180 is actually or would be enough for us to solve the question because I can see that that's one of the answers here for closing inventory balance and corresponds with or corresponds to answer C. So I know we've solved the question. It is answer C, but I still want to calculate gross profit. Okay. Total goods available for sale. I want to calculate this or the value of the total goods available for sale, to be honest. For sale during the period, we had the 70 units which were initially purchased at 53 each. And on top of this, 
another 70 units purchased later on with a value of um, with a value of 58 per unit. So I believe we did this computation in the previous video, but let's do it again. 70 times 58. Okay, this is 7,770. What was therefore the cost of sales? So the cost of sales must be the difference between 7,770 and 3,180. That's going to give me an amount equal to, let me do this again, 7,770 minus 3,180. This gives an answer of 4,900. 590, sorry. So this is the cost of goods sold. Let me stop here for a moment. I mean, this will allow us to compute the gross profit in a moment, but I want to stop for a moment and explain something to you. We are applying the um, periodic inventory system. It says we're, we're you know, this is, this is the assumption being made here. And to be quite honest, it somewhat contradicts reality, but you've got to be aware of this and you need to be ready for it potentially in the exam. What we're implying here is that the value of the units sold in terms of how much it cost us to procure them was this much. We sold 80 units and the assumption is to the extent possible, those sold 80 units must have come from the most recent deliveries. So the deliveries where we purchased from our suppliers 70 units at 58. So from that 70 units, we've got 70, which was purchased or were purchased at 58, and only an additional 10 coming from the earlier deliveries, which were received at a price of 53. I mean, if you do this computation, 70 times 58 plus 10 times 53, you get the same result. So this is just confirmation of the figure. I did it initially differently. I computed cost of sales as the difference between total goods available for sale and ending inventory. That must be cost of sales as well. However, please appreciate how unrealistic or counterintuitive this is. If we made a sale of 20 units on the 4th of December, we only realistically in the company had available the units purchased a few days before on the 1st. So assuming that we only used up 10 units from this delivery made at 53 is unrealistic. In reality, we must have used up more, 20, not 10. These units purchased at 58 were not available yet, but it doesn't matter. The assumptions we're making under a periodic inventory system, so this phrase over here, don't need to reflect reality in terms of what goods were available and which were not at a point when you were making a sale. We do this computation based on the total goods available for sale during the period, irrespective of when they entered the company, you know, on which December date, and ending inventory. So when asked to perform such exercises under the assumption of a periodic inventory system, please forget about reality, compute ending inventory under the relevant cost flow assumption, Compute total goods available for sale, which is the same irrespective of whether you're applying FIFO or LIFO. And I think it's easiest if you compute cost of sales as just the difference between the two, because that will free your mind from any thinking about, you know, were these goods really available for this sale or not? Okay, what's going to be therefore our profit computation or gross profit computation? Gross profit is going to be the difference between sales revenue and sales revenue in this case is simple we already did it in the previous uh, question and sales revenue doesn't depend on your cost 
uh, flow assumptions in terms of inventory valuation, live or FIFO, doesn't matter. So we sold 20 units at a price of 62 per unit. And on top of this, we sold 60 units at a unit price of 63. So sales revenue, 20 times 62 plus 60 times 63. Okay, this gives me 5,020. From it, I deduct my cost of sales. So 4,590 in brackets to suggest that this is a negative figure. And I'm looking at an answer of $430. Let's check. Yes, it still is in line with answer C, that gross profit. So just confirmation that C was the correct answer indeed.